sign into the chat and take an email an organization. Um, there are also two links in the chat. I'm going to post them one more time in case anybody missed them. Um, one is the agenda for today, so everybody can follow along if you would like. And the second one is a survey, um, which we're just kind of asking how we're doing and any thoughts on the progress of the CCC over the past six months. Um, and so please fill that out today if you can or if you're willing to do so. Um, so the first thing we're going to do today is our community calendar review. So if everybody wants to take a few minutes to look at the agenda, um, Emily has listed all of the upcoming events there for you. If you have something going on that's not listed there, um, everybody should have edit access and you're welcome to just add it yourself. Um, but take just a minute and check out these events, see if anybody has questions. Any thoughts, questions, or anything to add before we move on? Okay, well, I am excited to introduce our speaker today, Miss Julie Shoemaker. She is the nursing director for the Northeast Tennessee Nurse Family Partnership, and she's gonna share with us about that program today. Um, so I will turn it over to you, Julie. Hi, everybody. Hello. Thank you. <laughs> it's always so weird on Zoom to say hi, everybody, and everybody to stare at you. Um, so I appreciate whoever said hello back. <laughs> that would be um, me. Two good in from Tennessee Voices. <laughs> oh, well, I there would. you go. That was perfect. <laughs> good way to represent Tennessee Voices. I, I appreciate that. <laughs> um, well, I first just want to say hey, thanks for having me, and um, I've not been able to attend every meeting um, this year, but I have enjoyed the, the new format and, and just getting to know several of you all and um, getting to talk with you all and um, just share time with you um, through, through the pandemic. Um, also, kind of just want to see maybe a show of hands of how many of you all actually have ever heard of Nurse Family Partnership, know of us, know what we do. Yay, I get a hand. <laughs> I do not know. <laughs> All right, so not very many of you do, so that's wonderful for me because that means I get to talk and um, share with you all the, the great things that we're doing um, here. So let me just get started. Um, what we are is a program um, through ETSU's College of Nursing. Nurse Family Partnership has been around um, the United States and actually worldwide for going on about 40 years now. Um, and so we are here to just empower first-time moms um, to reach their goals that she sets in her life and in the life of her child. It may be a goal such as just, uh, you know, I want to find a place to live before my child arrives, or I need to know what to do or expect during labor. I want to breastfeed um, for at least a certain amount of time. It can be anything. And so our nurses um, sit down and talk with these moms and just um, figure out what's going on in her life and how we can better assist them. So there's a few guidelines um, that we have in place um, for each of our moms. And of course, it is for our first time mom. Um, and now that just means that she has not parented a child more than 30 days. So if she has had a fetal demise, she had a miscarriage, if she has um, delivered a child, but for some reason in that first 30 days and um, she lost custody of that child, then she still counts as a first time mom. Um, and I always use an example when I was a nursing and um, home visitor, I had a, a client that she was um, on her third pregnancy. 
but she counted um, for us because she had not parented either one of the other two children more than 30 days. She had lost custody. And um, we were actually able to get with her and she was able to take that child home from the hospital and um, parent that child for those first two years. So that was wonderful. And the second guideline that they need to meet is that they are in their first or second trimester. And that just means that she is less than 28 weeks gestation. And so as long as she falls into that timeline, then we can, we can um, sign her up. And then the third one is low income. And the easiest way to remember um, if they're low income is if they qualify for WIC, they qualify for NFP. And that's the quickest and easiest. If anybody's on here and they have any questions about that, you can always reach out to me or you can just send the referral in and we'll contact that mom and find out, is she first time? Is she in the first or second trimester? Is she low income? Um, I don't ever want you to hesitate to send us a referral because you think she doesn't meet the guidelines. Please send it and, and we will go through and, and vet each one. So once we get our clients enrolled, um, then we set up our potential clients with a um, review of guidelines and enrollment in the program. And then we do visit schedules that are based on what her availability is. So it's our goal to meet with that client every other week throughout the pregnancy and weekly through postpartum. And then every other week through infancy and toddlerhood because we will see mom throughout pregnancy, through postpartum and until the baby is two years old. So we're pretty intense. However, if mom is working on education, if she's got a job, if she's got a lot of things going on in her life, we can adjust that schedule um, to meet her needs. We provide many opportunities and um, for these young ladies to get involved in the community and um, through community partners, such as many of you that are on here. Um, I know they, um, there's the TLC Center in Carter County. We try to tell them about that and try to influence them on going in and doing the educations there so that they can earn like the mom bucks um, in that program as well as in our program um, and be able to get um, certain things for their babies. And um, we offer a large variety of um, necessities in what we call our bare necessity store. And so like I was saying, she can earn mom bucks um, by meeting her nurse each week, by um, setting goals and maintaining those goals, um, by having her baby. Um, we, we say, hey, you know, this was a challenge. And just to go through delivery, I think is hard sometimes. So um, they, they earn money through that. And then they're able to take that and buy brand new items such as car seats, cribs, and pack and plays, you know, breast pumps, you know, any kind of anything and everything that you can imagine, we have it in our store. Um, and if it's not listed in our store, but it's something that they feel that they need, we look to see if we um, can get it in the store. And so that can really help um, mom and her family. A couple of goals that we do have um, during our visits are just to improve pregnancy, improve um, child health and development, and improve that self-sufficiency of the family. I'm on my laptop and I keep grabbing my mouse on my desktop by mistake, I apologize. So improving our pregnancy outcomes, we decrease the pre, um, prenatal cigarette smoking. This is something that we work on all, our mom, all of our moms with. Um, we will talk to them about programs through the Department of Health. We set small goals of maybe just decreasing cigarette smoke, uh, smoking by one cigarette um, each week if we can get them down one. And by the next visit, we're doing good. And we believe that only a small change can make a big difference. And so um, we really work hard on um, that as well as any other um, substance they may be using as far as alcohol or um, street drugs or, or anything like that. We do have fewer hypertensive disorders of pregnancy due to the nurse being in the home. Um, each nurse will come out and do an assessment on our moms 
and they take blood pressure, they take weight, um, and they discuss how all of these things um, will influence not only her life, but baby's life. And so if we have someone with um, high blood pressure, we're talking to the OB office as well and um, getting them seen and, and working with them to decrease that or get on medication or something. We have fewer preterm births um, with our program due again to the fact that you've got an RN in the home um, and we're, we're not only assessing and finding out things, but we're educating mom. Um, just decreasing cigarette smoke, as I was just talking about, can influence those preterm births. And so we're excited to educate her about what a preterm birth is um, and how she can um, hopefully prevent that for herself and her baby. The second thing that we work on is improving the child's health and development. We do have an 8% reduction in child abuse and neglect. And that again is due to the fact that someone's coming in the home um, and they're seeing this family and they're talking to this family about what is age appropriate um, and how does that look on a, a daily basis for that family. Um, and so it really does educate not only mom, but anybody else that's in the home. Um, dad can come, grandparents can come. And so we are really taking upon the whole family and discussing um, really those child outcomes. 39% fewer healthcare encounters for injuries or ingestions in the first two years um, of life. And again, it goes back to having that nurse in the home to educate. And then 67% less behavioral and intellectual problems um, of children at age six. And these come from, again, Nurse Family Partnership has been around for 40 years. And so they have done lifelong studies, honestly, um, on children in the program. And so they can actually see the benefit of having a nurse in the home at this age when these children get into the school um, age category. And so we realize that at birth to age two, that brain is developing um, so rapidly. And we talk to moms and dads about how it's very important to not only just talk, to our children, but read to our children, just have everyday daily conversations with our kids. Um, and we, you know, we kind of monitor that to say, well, is it a healthy um, talk? Is it not? Um, and those kind of things. And if we're having struggles with that, then um, I'll give my shout out back to um, 10 Voices um, and we can always reach out to them. Um, we have reached out to many um, OTs, PTs, um, and speech therapist um, along the way as well to um, combat anything that we find in the home and that we might see that there's a developmental delay or, or something on our ages and stages and questionnaires. So the nurses are picking up so many different things that a lot of times would go unchecked um, because um, when you go into the doctor's office for 15 minutes, you know, it's hard for a doctor to see what's happening on an everyday um, span of this child's life. And so we actually um, will pick that up a lot of times before the doctors will. Um, improving economic self-sufficiency of the family. And um, we do reduce the use of welfare and other government agencies. Um, and again, that goes back to that nurse setting goals um, with the family. We can set goals of getting um, a GED, getting um, a new job, going back to college, any of those kind of things. And again, we, we use incentives such as the bare necessity um, mom bucks um, to help moms um, feel accomplished with that. Um, we do celebrations when they reach those goals. Um, we're all about if mom wants to put it up on Facebook, you know, letting the world know that she has got her GED or she has gotten her own home and um, we, we assist with trying to find furniture for that home or, or whatever her need is. And so we really try um, to empower them just to feel good about themselves and the accomplishments um, that they're making. Um, we have greater employment for mothers. Um, increase in father presence and partner stability. Um, and that is just because that a lot of times we will invite 
um, the father to participate um, in these visits and we make them part of the program and um, so they can see that it's not just about the mom's relationship with the child that is important but how important having a stable father in these children's life is and then fewer and um, closely spaced pregnancies so one of the big things that we talk about in our visits um, are you know when do you want to have that next child? Are you ready for that? Are you using some kind of birth control um, for that? And, and we use, again, agencies around the area to assist with that. And we talk to doctor's offices um, and, you know, even go to doctor's appointments with our, our clients to help them get a better understanding of what the doctor is discussing with them as far as the birth control that they may um, want to choose. So the big question I have is uh, for you all is how can Nurse Family Partnership help Carter County? Um, we have been around in this area for going on right at four years and I have had many girls come in and out of Carter County, but I would love to hear from you all on what you think we could do to assist Carter County in becoming a better county. So Julie, I have a question. This is Robin Modern. Yes. Hi, so it sounds like you're gathering lots and lots of data. And yes. And so what happens with, uh, I'm sorry to get to that part first, because you're doing a great job. This is an awesome um, position that not many people could actually have the heart for. So kudos to that. But where does all this data go? What happens with that? And what are the action steps that, that happen after that data is submitted where it is? So all of our data goes to Denver, Colorado, to the Nurse Family Partnership home base. We also will, we work, um, we're um, with the Department of Health here in Genesee. And so that is a new partnership with us. And so we are working on REDCap, if you all are familiar with that system, and getting all that data over to um, Tennessee Department of Health, so that that way they can track um, what's happening in our state as well. And then they take that, um, both of those agencies will take that and adjust plans on what we need to do um, accordingly, if that makes sense. Yeah, it does. And I'm, okay. I'm asking from the standpoint of, because you guys do see a lot of <clears throat> developmental um, delays. You see the behavioral and dis, uh, developmental disorders, maybe that early. And I'm just wondering where all that goes and, and how we can step in, because I am very interested in helping kids with developmental and behavioral disorders. So that's why I asked. Thank you. So a lot of like the delays and things like that, we, we meet with cabs and um, different people all over the communities. And we just find out what agencies we can um, work with. And we, you know, of course, work with um, early intervention and like I said, we work with the OTs, the PTs, the speech therapists, um, and just trying to get the, the moms to realize that there are more agencies out there to assist them. So we're pulling in constantly um, resources. The nurses are not just being RNs, they're also being case management. Yeah, tough job. Thank you for that. Thank you. Hey, Julie, it's Jillian. Um, I just wanted to to say what a great job I think that you all already are doing and how important this work is um, that you're doing. You know that I'm, I'm a huge Nurse Family Partnership fan. Yes, um, I am. And I think one of the things that we all consistently struggle with in Carter County is becoming a trusted person to our mamas. And so I think that's something that just takes time. Um, and I can't say enough about using voices of mamas who have been in the program to be a spokesperson for your program in Carter County. Um, there are things like, 
you know, people who live on top of Roan Mountain only trust people who also live yes. on top of Roan Mountain. <laughs> and so I think, and that's just an example. That's not, mm -hmm. um, you know, no, I, I understood true, that completely. But, um, <laughs> but I think that is such such a priority for our organizations to to make sure that we become a safe person and a safe organization for our community. And in my personal opinion, the way that we do that is just by building trust. Um, among people that they know and that they trust already. And so I think the more that you can be a presence at things in Hampton and at things in Stony Creek and at things on top of Roan Mountain, um, the greater your presence is gonna be trusted and um, and the more your numbers I think will continue to grow. But I think y'all are amazing and, and this program is exactly what we need to reach our mamas. So, so grateful for all that you do. Thank you, Tony. Yeah, this is Tony DeLucia. Uh, I feel, feel rather, uh, humbled to be following uh, comments and, and a presentation from three amazing women. Um, uh, love working with all of you. And uh, Julie, after what Robin said about where's this uh, data go and everything, it, it kind of um, impressed me that you're working with a national organization and a state organization because I'm going to hold up like um, here's the surface of the water, here's the tip of the iceberg, and then you've got what five sixths or something like that underneath. And um, Robin and I and uh, uh, texted Alicia and, and and talked to Vicky about looking at our veterans population. You know, we're a part of the country where it's really you know, amazing to serve your country, and I'm wondering how many of these mothers have served? How many of these mothers are, or their significant, you know, the fathers have a service record? And there, there are either mental health issues, substance abuse, abuse issues, economic issues that create issues. There are now the COVID problems that are uh, creating problems. So it's like a multiple of things that are this sub sub the layer sub the level of the water, you know, mm -hmm. um, that are the five six, and that's where the data is so rich. And so working on this problem with the Appalachian Regional Commission to try and see what we can do around here, and uh, it, it's just daunting. And knowledge is power. And so if there's any way we can work with you, we you know we would love to. Okay, thank you, Tim. I had a question. Um, I was wondering um, if the partnership has ever considered expanding outside of that 30 day window for a first time parent. Um, so no, not really. <laughs> Currently, that is where the guidelines are. Um, we are collecting um, data constantly that's why I say don't ever not send me a referral because if she does not qualify, I can keep up with that. And then that kind of gives me power um, to take back to nurse family partnership and say, you know, I've had four or five girls or I've had 20 girls that, you know, they would have been able to be in our program had we not had to meet that. And so then that allows them to go back and look at that data and say, well, maybe we should change some things. Um, and so we are constantly keeping track of that and, and reporting that back to them. And um, one of the things that we really would like to do is um, open this up to not just first time moms, but, you know, what we call multips and, um, you know, they've had one, two, three, four, five, whatever. Um, and so I'm, constantly keeping that data going and putting in nurse family partnerships ear we have a need for that in this area um, it's not just a first-time mom that we need and um, and I think Tony made a great point to the mental health and um, the drug crisis that we have in this area and that's another thing that I talk to NFD about a lot is you know it they could be a multip and really they're still you know kind of like a first-time mom because that they've got these mental health needs or they've got these drug crisis things going on um, and they just need assistance um, and so 
Nurse Family Partnership does a wonderful job across the United States about listening to their site and, and working to change things. So I'm hoping in the next few years that they will allow us to pilot um, different, different aspects of what they will be changing. Thank you. I don't know if that answered your, your question. It, yeah, Sorry, it did. <laughs> yeah, it did. I, I had worked in treatment for many years and I just knew like it was never an option. Like you guys were right. an option because all of our parents didn't have their kids in their custody. Right. So they're kind of like first time parents. So yeah. yeah, as long as they've not, as of today, as long as they've not parented more than 30 days, but um, again, just send that to me and I can always call over to our, our national service office and see, they do what we call variances every once in a while for us. Um, and so if it's a very, like, if it's a big hardship um, with this one client, then we can you know, go over the things that's going on in this girl's life. And, and sometimes they will accept it and, and make exceptions. That's great. Thank you. Thank you. Julie, um, it's not just Carter County that's in need. Um. Correct. <laughs> yes, yes. And I, I'm so glad you said that because I completely forgot to tell you that we cover all um, of Northeast Tennessee plus Cock County. And <laughs> So, you know, if, if it would help for us to write a letter of support um, because of the, the issues we have here with right. drug use and poor perinatal outcome and underserved, you know, we're happy to help um, yes. if, you know, if it would help to write a letter of support, get the Rural Health Consortium behind okay. it, um, all of our health departments. So just let us know. Yes, Dr. Rick, thank you so much. Yeah. Tony writes well. <laughs> you just volunteered him for that, didn't you? Any more questions or thoughts for Julie? May I ask a dumb question? This is Yolanda Vesto. I don't know if you can hear me or not. Yes, ma'am. Once upon a time at the health department, there used to be a program, I can't remember the acronyms, but it was um, helping parents to be, to help their children grow. Uh, I know it was a volunteer program and it was really neat because we got to teach the parents how to play with their kids, how to uh, you know, talk to their kids, but it was for multiple parents and I, I realized it was a volunteer program. Is that not going anymore? So that sounds like, I think what you're referring to is the HUDS program. No, and the, um, no? no, it wasn't. It, it, for some odd one, I want to say Chad or Chips or something, <laughs> but, but I know that uh, I, I enjoyed the program because we got to play with the kids and we got to show the parents how to play with the kids and how to make uh, toys and stuff for the kids using whatever they had at home, not having to expend their money on, on things that they'd love to have, but they didn't know they could do the same thing with whatever they had at home. And, right. and you could uh, pigeonhole them into different organizations as they needed them. Mm -hmm. uh, but I don't know if that program is still going because you could have multiple children. You right. couldn't just... You know, you didn't have to just have one. So you have to ask somebody that's been in the health department for a while. It's been a while since I've been in the health department. Yolanda, as far as I know right now, there there is not um, not a program, a home visiting program like that. Um, and well, there was the, the hugs program and then Chant has taken kind of the place of hugs. Um, and Chant does a lot of more like case management from my understanding. That's Emily, a shame though. Emily Brooks is on the call. If we want Emily to chime in. She I would love Emily more. too. <laughs> oh, I was just going to say, I, I thought you were, I think you're thinking of Chant is what she is talking about. And um, those programs are still going on. They, they don't, they've renamed them and I cannot think of what it is right now. I'm sorry. Um, I could, I mean, I'll, I'll ask my home visitors and I'll put it in the chat. Um, but I don't know if they can, um, they visit as often as like this program would. 
Um, but they do, do they do still um, kind of work with case management and kind of getting resources to families um, that qualify for their programs. But I will put something in the chat when I get that name. Thank you, Emily. Any so other Alicia from Telemon? Um, I would like, I was late for the meeting. I'm so sorry, it was like 15 minutes late. So I just called the end of your presentation. But um, I was wondering if you could put your contact information in the chat because I would love to talk to you. A lot of what I did catch um, is a lot of the same stuff that we do. We do ASQ with our kids and um, we set goals with the families and stuff. And I would just like to maybe touch base to see exactly what I missed <laughs> on the presentation, but um, how we could um, maybe be a resource for one another. Okay, I'm putting it in right now. Awesome, thank you. Jillian, may I make an announcement about needs and trust? Um, you all talked about Carter County and they only trust people in certain areas. Um, I'm working with Mountain City, um, very similar feelings there. Um, there's a group there, the health department and also women of Mountain City are putting together a health fair uh, June 24th and 25th. I think I've probably mentioned it before, but I there, um, we're going to have some educational tables. They're free. There's not a, a fee to participate. Some of you may already be participating. If you will, please email me so we can make sure to get your name up there that you're participating. And, um, if you're interested, just let me know. We're going to have, um, some information tables available. What we're trying to do is to get women that are 40, 50 years old, have never had a pap smear, to walk them into the health department and say, you know, we're here, we'll hold your hand, please take this step. Because if they get it done at the health department, they can get free paps, they can get follow-up. Um, so anyway, we're really interested in participating. ETSU College of Medicine will be there. Um, addictive medicine um, to talk about that. Pharmacy is going to be there and there are going to be some nurses there. So um, we welcome you guys. You are the experts. We'd love for you to um, participate. Just email me. Let me know if you're definitely going to be there or if you need more information. Thank you. Hey, Judy, uh, what's the dates on that? It is um, June 24th and 25th. And um, we're going to be running at 8 to 5. If you've ever been to Mountain City, it's at the traffic light. Um, there's going to be, at, there's a church that they'll have the uh, mammogram bus. Miles for Smiles is participating. When they go, then Ballad sells, sends their mammogram bus. And um, they're also gonna be doing vision. And then what we're doing is we're trying to get, we're gonna set up food uh, back behind the health department in the uh, Rural Health Consortium parking lot so that people will hopefully walk over, come for food and stay for information and then go get a pap smear is what our dream is. Okay, that sounds great. Um... Thank you so much. Sure. Does it cost anything to be a part of that? No, no, it's absolutely free. And we'd love, okay, like and if you've got giveaways, we welcome that. You know, we're, we're hoping to have between one and 200 women over the two days. Okay, I'll and, bring And this. men, men will be there too, and some kids, but when they're coming for dental care, we're kind of discouraging kids because there's no real place to, take care of them. So um, it'll be mostly adults. Okay, looking forward to seeing you there. Thank you. Right, thank you. Okay, friends, any other announcements before we move on? Okay, reminder to take this survey, if you haven't already, 10 of you have taken it. 
30 of you are on this call, be a helper and take your survey, friends. Um, so we know what we need to continue working on and what we're doing well. Um, I put it in the chat again for you. So at this point, we're gonna divide into our breakout rooms. I'm gonna go ahead and open the rooms and you can choose for yourself which one you're going to. If you have trouble, let me know. I'll hang out here for just a second, make sure everybody gets situated and then committee B, I'll be in there with you. So I'm gonna go ahead and open them now. Okay, Dolly, will you share an update from Committee A today? Yes. So um, thank you again, everybody from Committee A for all your participation. So we um, went ahead and, and divided up and delegated uh, roles for the articles for the next round of magazine for, um, uh, let's see here, June, July, August. So for September's edition, um, I'm also pleased to share with everybody that um, the summer edition has been printed. It will be delivered tomorrow and will be ready for um, pickup distribution either through our office um, or you can make arrangements with me to pick one up if you like. I only have 200 copies, so don't go crazy with me now, but um, we will have that available. And then Committee A is already getting putting forth the work to get the next article up and ready for um, later on this year in three months. And um, then we also um, discussed a school resource packet to put that together for handing out teachers at the beginning of the school year to say, hey, here's some programs that we offer. Here's how we can help you um, create a curriculum for students in your classroom. So that's it. Thank you, Dolly. Um, committee B today, we checked in on our May and June goals, which were promoting park spaces, um, and then also working to develop that virtual training database and the um, community resource guides. And so we did a quick little recap of kind of what we talked about last time with Dr. Skitzina um, and walk through some potential issues and potential strategies for supporting Uninus or being part of Uninus platform. Um, and we walked through a few little issues. Our committee, as y'all know, has been kind of the redheaded stepchild. Is that politically correct to say, I don't know if it is, of the CCC. Um, and so we are continuing to define our goals and who we are and those kinds of things and um, working towards some um, written down kind of, this is who committee B is. Um, and we'll be, be looking at the other committees as well, making sure that we're better communicating that with people. Um, and then also continuing to develop our um, community calendar, resources for that, maybe a, a better way to submit events than the form we're currently using. So we appreciate Megan for stepping up and kind of owning that part. Um, and so that's kind of where we are. We're just continuing to, to figure out who we are and um, work toward these resource guides and databases for all of the CCC to use. All right, Dr. Delicia, will you share Committee C's progress? You never should have let a data maniac be the head of uh, one of these committees. But uh, we started out kind of rocky, uh, not Rocky Balboa, but you know we didn't really get what we were supposed to do, which was find out how we were uh, doing. And it wasn't a really good progress report on Tennessee Together that we would uh, changed the world by getting it into the Carter County schools uh, in the Elizabethan schools by the end of the school year for the 8th, 10th, and 12th graders. Well, that just didn't happen. That, that's the survey that is part of the Tennessee Together so, uh, Substance Abuse kind of uh, youth behavioral risk survey questions, but done with the flair of all this money coming in and being designed by uh, Lacey Hardigan and the group there. But what we did have, uh, as far as the Barrel of Monkeys fun, was um, when I mentioned the analogy of the tip of the iceberg, uh, the five six is trying to find populations that go uh, unheated. And um, we, 
I've been looking at a grant lately through the Appalachian Regional Commission, which is um, Inspire, and it's looking at creating an ecosystem to take uh, substance abuse um, survivors and, and, and uh, recovering um, uh, users and align them with the workforce and get them basically to a point of recovery and small grants that can be used to apply for larger grants. And that kind of caught on with our group. Um, everybody sort of has a, a health background and you know we're a, we're a big group for healthcare jobs. And so that was a natural thing. Then Jane ch pipes in with the fact that there's been $3 million brought in from the Biden, um, what's, it, what's it called, Jane? Um, uh, jobs. Uh, I, I don't know if I have it right. The Recover American Rescue Act? Reco or American, American Recovery Act. So what? there's going to be priorities like that. that are going to allow funding spent for initiatives to do things like what the ARC wants to do. So we're going to have our first face-to-face -face or additional Zoom call to see how the outcomes of this data maniacal um, focus on um, veterans and veterans health or ACEs and um, the trajectory of people's lives that end up, you know, um, being um, subjected to the tendencies of uh, substance abuse or other types of self-medication um, will play out in um, in lieu of in light of this coalition, in light of not just this coalition, but as Judy McCook was saying, all of the groups in our area, because data is what's going to drive a lot of what our colleges do, what our employers do, what our agencies do, what our uh, agriculture, housing, transportation does, uh, and, and I think that that's what this um, tip of the iceberg versus uh, underneath the iceberg kind of analogy amounts to. Any, any comments from the rest of the group? Perfect. Thank you for sharing, everybody. Um, super glad to have everybody with us today. And we will see everybody next month. Um, if you haven't taken the survey, please, please do. So we can kind of get, continue to get input on how we're doing and what the needs are and kind of where you want this group to go in the future. I'll put it in the chat one last time. Um, so please, please continue taking the survey if you haven't. And we look forward to seeing everybody next month. Bye. Bye.